This 4K Vizio TV won't even turn on. I get no picture, no sound, and sometimes I don't even get a standby light. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to diagnose the problem and fix it. Let's start by removing the back cover. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick. I started Nick's TV repair over a decade ago, and since then, my team and I have fixed over a thousand Vizio TVs. Today, I'm gonna to share with you some tips and tricks we have learned along the way that will save you time and money. There are four main circuit boards in this TV, the power supply, main board, LED driver, and TCON. We're gonna start by checking the power supply first just to rule it out. The power supply diagnostic is very simple. It's a visual inspection of the capacitors on the top right corner of the board. When they fail, they can start leaking electrolytic fluid at the bottom near the legs as well as at the top. Additionally, the tops can also start to dome, which is another visual indication of a failed capacitor. In our scenario, we don't have any failed capacitors, but for contrast, here's what a failed capacitor looks like. If you have defective capacitors, you can check out our power supply repair video, which I will link in the description below. Now that we've ruled out our power supply, the only other board that can cause the symptoms we're experiencing is the main board. So let's take a closer look at that one next. I will be showing you our step-by-step -step process to fix this main board after confirming it is the fault. It is a more advanced repair process and requires advanced tools. If you'd like to send in your main board for us to fix, we do have a flat rate service available on our website, which comes with a one-year warranty that I will also link in the description below. Now that we've removed the main board from the TV, let's take it one step further by removing the heatsink. There are four pogo pins, which we're gonna be using our needle nose pliers to pinch and remove. And now the heatsink lifts off. On this main board, we have two processors. Think of this one as the CPU, the brains, and this one as the GPU, the graphics. Instead of having pins on the sides, these chips connect to the board through hundreds of tiny solder balls, kind of like sitting on a bed of marbles. When the TV is on and running, those chips get really hot. That's why they need a large heatsink. When things warm up, they tend to expand. When they cool down, they contract. Now, because the processor chip, the solder balls, and the circuit board are all made of different materials, they will expand and contract at different rates. That push and pull causes fractures on those solder balls. To confirm this is our problem, we're going to try and temporarily reconnect those broken connections by rapidly heating the area with hot air. This should make everything expand quickly and press those loose connections back together. If done right, this should bring the TV back to life. Now, if heating up the processors has no effect, it's possible the fault is more severe and the separation in the connections too far gone for this trick to work. However, it doesn't mean that it's not the fault. Now, to be clear, if this trick works, it is not a fix. This is only a way for us to diagnose and confirm the fault. We still have to actually reform the solder bonds between the chip and the circuit board, which I will show you how we do that next. Now, because the heatsink is removed, we definitely don't want to run this main board for too long in its current state. So I already unplugged it, and now we're going to start our repairs. This rework machine we are using is going to very precisely heat up the processor from the top and the PCB from the bottom until we reach the solder's melting point. In order to help this process, we're going to apply flux to the solder balls. Flux is a chemical that helps clean metal surfaces by removing oxidation and impurities, which allows the solder to form a strong, reliable bond. Once we have reached the solder's melting point, we gently nudge the chip. If the chip slightly shifts and comes back to its original position, it will confirm all the solder is molten and flowing properly. This will confirm we have reformed the solder bonds. We always want to reflow both processor chips as both of them are prone to having cracked solder joints. Before we live test the circuit board, now that we have reformed the solder bonds between the chips and the PCB, we're gonna to wanna to reinstall the heatsink, but we're gonna to wanna to upgrade the thermal dissipation between the heatsink and the processors. What I mean by that is we're gonna remove these pads that were there originally, and instead we're gonna use high-end thermal paste MX4. This is gonna help increase the heat transfer between the processor dies and the heatsink. And it looks like I have good spread, so we'll go ahead and lock in the heatsink. And now we can perform our live testing. The main board is installed back into the TV. Let's go ahead and power it on and see what we get. Okay, it looks like the Vizio logo is appearing before we had a pink box when we were doing the heating up. Okay, we're getting no signal on the HDMI. I just plugged in a fire stick. All right, and it looks like it's working. If you have a Vizio mainboard that you would like to send in for us to fix, we do offer the flat rate services, which come with a one year warranty. Those are available on our website, which I will link in the video description down below. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.